Hello, guys. Welcome to the Wives Roundtable show. This right here is the show where we bring you information that would help you lead a wholesome life. My name is Amaka Chibuzobi, and I'm your host on this program. Today on the show, we're going to be looking at something that I know concerns a lot of women. Guys, you people know the economy is not smiling. Like everyone is searching for how to make more money. And so many women, even those in different careers, are thinking, how do I have something else that brings in money? And this is what we want to talk about today on the show. So tonight, our topic is how to identify a viable side hustle as a career woman. Yes, I know some women are like, oh, yeah, you're talking about me. Trust me, I know. And we all need this information. So even if you're not a career woman, you already have one business. This information we're going to share right here would really help you see if there is another business you can have. So honestly, this is for everybody. We'll be right back after this quick break. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You're right on time for the Wives Roundtable show. My name is Amaka Chibuzaobi, and today on the show, we're going to be looking at how to identify a side hustle as a career woman. Today, I'm going to introduce to you my guest. She is a brand development specialist. She helps women. She has, you know, serious bias for women. So she helps women figure themselves out, you know, how to find something else to do even as career women. So join me as I make welcome Chika. Chika, welcome to the Wise Round Table Show. Thank you. It's my yes. to be here. Yes, it's such a pleasure having you. So now tell me, first of all, Chika, you've done this for quite some time. What is the craze? Can I call it the craze now for side hustles? You know, before, like five years ago, seven years ago, 10 years ago, you really, side hustle wasn't a term. Oh, yes. Yeah, That's it wasn't true. a term. So now, what do you think is driving this new found love for side hustle? Okay, first off, we need to understand that um, growing up, a lot of millennial women mm. grow up from this background of be a good girl, get good grades, get a good husband if you're lucky, get an okay job. Mm. So the goal was to get an okay job, be a good wife, be a good mother, and that was just the benchmark. But growing up, we've not seen that there are other things we can become. So that yeah. is why a lot of people, you see that a lot of women are really like, there's this like women uprising. Yeah. So it's like a lot of people are getting their wings, getting their mojo back because they didn't start off on that ground of, yes, I want to build something that's authentically in me. So they just got a job, let me do something. So I need to be at home, let me just start something. Let me just get an okay job and move on. Along the line, they identify, oh, there's more, there's need for more. The income I'm even earning is not enough for me, it's not even sustaining me. There's family, there's society, there are just so many people depending on the mega salary you're getting. And there's always that question of how can I earn more? But what I always tell people is, instead of jumping on just earning, mm -hmm. doing anything, just ask yourself, what path do I want to take? Okay. That would guide your decision better and you make more informed decision on what exactly you want to do to earn money. So it should just be about any money. Absolutely. It should be about building something you truly want to build for yourself. Now, you mentioned this, um, don't just jump on anything because you want to make money. I'm yeah. sure you've seen a lot of people lot do of that. that. <laughs> In fact, there's a, one of your stories that you shared one time where you started up, I think it was a fruit business mm -hmm, or something mm -hmm. like that, just because you wanted to earn money. But, you know, you just see a lot of women just jump into, ah, oh, food stuff, move, whoa, everybody goes there. Ah, baby clothes, everybody moves there. So now, why is it important that you don't just chase after anything that would bring money? Okay, so at the end of the day, is meeting a need. The goal is to meet a need. That yeah. is the only thing that can earn you the money. You don't just talk about and tell us, oh, I'm very passionate about this and we get money and pay you. How are you meeting our need? So first off, you need to identify what is that thing you're truly interested in? What is that need you truly want to meet for other people? Because when you jump on something you're not interested in, what happens is two months down the line, you've lost interest and you don't have that, that tenacity to really build on anything. So you're just there trying to figure it out, you know, trying to copy what your colleague is doing. Oh, I saw that Amaka last year, Amaka bought baby clothes and sold and she made so much money. Let me go Let me into go that. Buy. You don't even have an idea of how these things work. And even when it's time for you to learn, because you're not genuinely interested in it, you won't be paying so much attention. You mentioned about my fruit art business. It's something I really, I really admire, but it's not a business I can thrive on. 
I like food. I enjoy cooking. But I cannot cook I know for do. people. <laughs> I can't sit and say, oh, I want to cook for people to pay me. That is not my interest. So even if it's going to make so much money for me, I won't do that. So we need to understand what is that thing I'm genuinely interested in, that need I want to meet for others. What is the gap I've identified? Because every business needs to identify a gap that you're coming to fill. And another thing we need to pay attention to is, on the long run, what is the goal? What is the vision? Is it just for now? Am I doing it just to augment my salary or do I really want to build something? When I first started out my journey, for me, it was just about augmenting salary. Mm. But that was not sustainable. I asked myself, so what is the big picture? Where are we going with this? And I saw myself that, oh, if I do this in the next five, ten years, I don't see myself there. I don't see myself selling any gift item. I don't see myself doing any fruit ad business in the next five, ten years. As much as I've seen people who have built something solid on those, those paths. those businesses. But I didn't see myself there. I remember when someone offered to build a website for me, I was like, Oga, I appreciate the contribution, but then I don't see myself doing this even tomorrow. I woke up tomorrow and just closed shop. And that was what happened. I woke up one day, I was like, you know what? Let me just take time, take a break, figure myself out, know what it is I want to do. This is bringing the money, but this is not what I want to do with myself. I already have a day job, so I'm not looking for something that will overwhelm me the more. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for something that actually meets my need for having a business alongside my day job. Okay. So what are some of the challenges that career women face when it comes to building a side hustle? Because I know that there are so many career women out there today who have identified the need. Mm -hmm. They have a passion to fill that need. Mm -hmm. But then they ask themselves, can I do it? What of this? What of that? Yes. So what are some of the challenges you've identified that have kept most career women that actually have identified something that they need to start doing or they want to start doing, but it has stopped them from doing that. One of the major things is lack of focus. You see this shiny object syndrome, a lot of us have that issue. So today we actually see that something is working out fine. But tomorrow we see our neighbor doing something that seems to be working better. Ours is not as if it's terrible, but it's not just as good as the other person's own yet. We jump off from that one, okay, let me abandon this one and go to this other one. So that's why you see a lot of people is as if, oh, today you're doing network marketing, tomorrow you're doing uh, another one, next tomorrow is another thing. There is no focus, there's no staying power. Mm -hmm. And nothing thrives without staying power. If you cannot concentrate, if you cannot focus on a particular thing, any idea is like a seed. You sow a seed, you don't reap on, during your sowing season. You don't reap at that time. There's harvest season. There's a time to nurture. There's a time to build on something. There's a time to improve your capacity. There's a time to build your own self. Because mm. at the end of the day, I always tell people, your business cannot grow beyond the work you have done on yourself as a person. If you're a careless person... Sorry, your business cannot grow, grow beyond, beyond the work, work you, you have, have done, done on yourself. yourself. Wow, that's deep. Because if you're, if you're a careless person, you will take that same attitude to your business. If you don't know how to manage money as, your, as a salary earner, you cannot manage your business money. If you don't mm -hmm. know how to put yourself together as a person, you still take that same attitude into your business. And you mm -hmm. keep losing customers because people will be like, oh, this one has a, a, a horrible attitude. Mm -hmm. This is something you need to work on. So as a person, you need to build that staying power. Like, what am I going to achieve within the next six months? What am I focusing on? There are so many things we can actually do. But if you don't have the capacity to do all at once, especially when you don't have the fund or the, or the manpower to execute everything at once, Focus on one. This does not mean that you will not do other things. Yeah. What this will help you do is you help it will help you to build on something that will thrive. I can take whatever lesson you've gotten from that one to the next one. So at the end of the day, focus on a particular thing. Once you decide that this is what I want to do, something one thing I like about myself is if I say this is it, you will drag me out and I still want to see the end of it. It's not working out. Let me see. Are there other ways I can do it? Are there other things I can apply? And that's because I'm really interested in what it is I'm doing. When I did fruit ads, I didn't have that patience. So even my teacher at that time would be like, okay, she can just patience, attend the um, exhibition, do this, do that. And to me, just like, you're telling me to spend more money. And see, and I, I don't have the money to be throwing out. It's not working. Can we just pack our load and be going home? <laughs> so that's because I'm interested in what it's that I'm doing. So I'm always looking for opportunity of how can I improve? How can I do this better? How can I reach more people? How can I serve more people? Mm. But if it's something I'm not interested in, I will jump off. That is why knowing something that you're interested in is key. Building that staying power is very important. Mm. Give yourself time frame. And one of the things that a lot of work, work, working men do is, oh, I've gotten the mojo, I know what it is I want to do, and they jump off, I want to quit tomorrow. Why are you quitting too? 
they want to quit their jobs, their jobs right? tomorrow yes. to face this particular yes. thing. Why are you quitting? To? What are you yes. quitting for? How long have you done this? Are you sure this will still thrive in the next five, six months? Wow. I always tell people, they tell you, oh, your salary is a bribe to steal your career, be to steal your destiny. Steal your destiny. <laughs> Do you yes. have one already? <laughs> <laughs> and for me as a person, if I didn't have my day job, I wouldn't have done most of the courses I did when I started, before my business had any money. That was the surest way I could earn, I could raise any fund to do anything for myself. Hmm. So if you have your job, see it as a source of income to build your dream. Don't hmm. see it as something that is holding you back, a reason yeah. why your life is not moving well, yeah. or you feel this is not, this is holding you back. My mates have gone, my mates are doing this, my mates are doing that. At the end of the day, what do you want to do for yourself? Hmm. When you define this, give yourself time frame. So in the next six months, I want to have grown this business to this stage. In the next 12 months, it will have gone to this stage. So when it gets to this particular stage, I, I know that I have the confidence this. to leave this, if that is even the goal. Yes. Because there are people who have the goal to build their business and still be in their day job Absolutely. because they have interest in both worlds. Yes. There are other people who want to build something they can quit their day job for. for. So it just depends on, you need to identify what is the big picture for me? What, why am I going with this? And this era where we are, everything is online, which is amazing, but a lot of online business owners do not handle their businesses like a proper business. Let's go for a quick break. When okay. we come back, you're going to tell us how to develop this staying power. Because you keep mentioning, have the staying power. Have the staying power. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it sounds like a no-brainer, mm -hmm. you know? So, like, you need staying power to build something. But it's not, a, it's not an easy thing to have. For oh, sure. Especially when nothing is coming in. And, you know, being a career woman already, you're getting pressure from the office. Things are, you know, you need to focus on certain things here. Yet you're trying to nurture this thing. And it could be very easy to be impatient. Yeah. Right? So how does one develop that staying power in the first place? And then how do they now make these two lives thrive alongside each other? Because like you rightly said, not everybody wants to dump their careers for their True. side hustle. Some want to do the two of them together. But you know, a lot of people will now make it like guilt trip you. Like, oh, what are you still there? Any salary? Come and do this thing now. <laughs> Answering someone, yes, Answering sir. Answering somebody, yes, sir. You know all of that. So let's discuss all of this right after this break. Guys, you're still on the Wise Roundtable show and we'll be right back. Welcome back. You're still on the Wives Roundtable show and we're still talking about how to identify a viable side hustle as a career woman. I still have with me a brand development specialist, Chika, and she's been talking to us about what we need to know before we jump into any side hustle. We see lots of women lose so much money because my friends say, my friends say, and they just start up a business and before you know it they are overwhelmed they are confused they are bitter they've cut off that friend as a village person you know they are upset with everyone but there were certain things they ought to have done that they didn't do before they jumped into that business and you know chica has already told us that we need to first of all identify a need and then identify if we are even passionate about filling that need for people and then we need to build our staying power now this is what i want to ask you how do we do that like is there any gym we need to go <laughs> and you know build the muscle of the staying power how do we do that because that's actually where the problem lies you can imagine you're in a career where your boss is a nightmare and so you're saying okay let me start this side hustle so that i can know if one day i would leave this um nightmarish boss you know, and you're there starting this business. Six months, business has not done anything. Instead, your salary seems to be just going in there, you know. So you're asking yourself, what is this? This is a need. I've identified it. I didn't I identify it again? You know, you begin to second guess yourself. This is something I'm passionate about. Like, I can actually use my last dime to do this thing. But it's not working. Maybe it's not for me, you know. So how do we build that staying power to see things through? Okay, first off is we need to be in that place where we have our own focus. When we talk about goal, a lot of people adopt other people's goals. Can you give me an example? Because so there are so many founding one kind. There are so many <laughs> times that you see someone and you're like, okay, my goal now is to make 10 million naira in the next one year. Okay. That's most likely because you've heard someone else say it. Mm. 
how does that connect to you as a person? One, do you have the capacity to earn 10 million naira? Or do you think motivation alone is going to help you make that money? You know when they tell you make 10 figures aspire. in two days. Aspire. aspire. <laughs> so make 10 figures in two days. Do you have the capacity to do that? So many times you see people set targets they do not they have, have the capacity to meet. Mm. If you're saying that, oh, I want, I remember one time I was with someone. She has a fashion business and she said she wanted to make, um, I think, three million or so in the next three months. So how many pieces of clothes are you going to sell? And she said she was going to sell about 60 pieces. At what price point? I think it's about 12,000 or so. But at the end of the day, when we did the calculation, it was going to earn her about 600,000 or 700,000 naira. She would have sold those 60 pieces. Yeah. She would have still felt unfulfilled that she did not yeah. make 3 million naira. Mm. So many times we declare things that we do not have the capacity to achieve without taking into consideration what would it cost me to achieve this now for working yeah. women you're already in your day job you don't even have time time no day anywhere yeah so you need to ensure that whatever target you're setting for yourself how many hours in a week can i work on my own business how many hours can i commit to doing something if you don't know how many hours you can commit to doing something you do not even know how many hours you have to do anything that means you cannot measure any progress you're making Absolutely. you can't decide or define that yes in the next three months i want given to that, have gotten this you can't say that yes, because yes. you don't have a routine that is guiding your day so you just freestyle anything there are some people who earn really good salaries and you see them that they take their salary to fund their business which is good but how long do you want to do that you need to give yourself that idea that in the next three months, I want this business to be established in such a way that it's earning its own salaries and paying its own bills so that my salary can be my salary from my day job. This can be this. Hmm. It's good for you to invest in your business, but you need to decide it cannot when. Be it can, business cannot remain forever. a baby forever. Hmm. Babies grow. Business needs to grow. So you realize that some people do not have that staying power because they declare they set targets they cannot meet. Yeah. Oh, I want in a week to bake 100 cakes and um, to set 100 people. Auntie, can you bake 100 cakes in a week? Mm. But you're saying, I want to do this. Can you do that? Do you have the manpower to do that? Do you have the resources to do that? You're not looking into all of those things. You're just declaring a figure you want to meet. You just go, oh, in the next one week, I want us to have three. And um, in the next one year, I want us to have three, three athletes in Lagos. There was a time it happened, something like that happened to me. I feel setting this very exciting goal. They said it should be exciting, smart, everything. It was smart. <laughs> but three months passed, I did achieve that. And I asked myself, let's go back. Because one thing I like about myself is I tell myself the truth before anyone will tell Absolutely. me that truth. So I got myself in this meeting. And see, sit down, let's review this thing. What happened? And I realized that I created this very good solution, but it was very good to me. There was no marketing budget. There was nothing done about it to push it out there. So I was just rel rel relying on a particular means to sell it. And what I reached was just the people I could reach within that particular means. Now, I wanted to sell to people outside that particular area. Well, what did I do to reach them? That. I didn't do anything to reach those people. And I took this as a feedback. So whenever you're going to do this kind of thing, ensure that you're putting this and this into consideration. But many of us do not want to hear that truth. What we want to hear is, yes, you can make 10 million in one day. It's possible. Yes. Do you have the capacity to make that? You're using money to make 10 million. How much do you have to put down to make 10 million? Yes. We do not have all of this capacity. I start feeling like, oh, things are not working out. This one is not happening. This one is not happening. So we, we always ask ourselves, oh, someone I said this business with three years ago, the person is not everywhere doing a lot of things. But you're not asking yourself, are you putting in as much work as, as that, that person. person. It's a different thing that you're working mm. 10 hours a day. It's another thing that you're doing the right thing that can actually grow the business. Mm. Those are two different things. There are so it's who not spend, the amount of time you spend on no, the business. It's the thing you're actually doing. doing. What is the work you're putting in? What defines as this work? And you can't define the work if you're not defining the exact results you want to achieve at the end of the day. Mm. So if you want to reach 1,000 new, new prospects in the next three months, what are the practical steps you're going to take to reach those 1,000 new, new um, prospects? Posting on Instagram, posting on Facebook alone does not cut it. Yes. What are other active things you would do to achieve that particular result? So those are things people do not take into consideration. We're just all about, we want to make this, we want to make that. If that does not happen, when we want we that to happen, get we just get discouraged and feel, oh, things are not working out, or maybe it's not for me, maybe mm -hmm. it's not for my kind of person. Some people actually have the money, money is not really the problem, but yet the business is not growing. People have some people have rich husbands, some people have good paying jobs, they are earning their own salary, but see that business is not moving the way they want it to move. 
but they're not asking the right questions. Question. What is the reason behind this? Why is this not working out? They're not, they just say, oh, if I pump in more, more money, money, let me Absolutely. pump in more money, let me open Absolutely. another outlet, maybe it's not here, maybe it's not there. If you don't identify the problem, you might most likely have it when you open another outlet, and that would continue that way without you achieving any progress wow. at all. This makes a lot of sense. Now let's talk about balancing very quickly. How does a career woman balance her side hustle such that none stifles the other? Oh well, not stifling the other is relative, really. Mm. Because um, for some people, they are building to some, they quit their day job yes. to face their business. Well, some at least other in people, that time that they are still in that mm -hmm. day job, let well, the some business other people not be, now. <laughs> <laughs> some other people, um, they want to build both together. Yeah, the and that is where sourcing comes in. You have the vision does not mean you must be the one to execute the vision. Okay. You can outsource some of the activities to other people. You okay. can hire some other people to help you execute some of the tasks. So you don't have to be the person doing everything. Now, when you outsource, you must communicate what it is you are about to the person you are sourcing this. Whether the person is a full-time staff or the person is a contract staff or is another organization that is handling something for you. You must communicate to this person, this is what I stand for. Mm. So at the end of the day, whatever it is, whatever solution you bring it for me, must pass through this so this is what this organization is striving on so ensure you're meeting this more like a standard that yes, we are meeting this is the culture of this is the culture and you need this is what i want it. to achieve this is what i want to communicate to people so whatever it is you're going to do ensure you're communicating this particular message to people so you don't have to do everything yourself that's where you can have time to actually give your best in your day job because at yes. the end of the day you would not want to be that monster in another person's job and yes. expect angels in your own business absolutely so you have to find that absolutely. balance that oh yes this is how many hours i have realistically to me that i can work on my own thing this is how many hours i'm putting in my own business and if that is the case what can i do to execute some of the tasks that i cannot even when you have all the time there are things you're not good at yes there sure. are things you will not be <laughs> able to handle true. So there are people who do not like anything tech. You need to hire someone that will do that. There are people who do not like anything, maybe all the back-end work, writing proposals, sending emails. There are people who do not want that. All they want to do is they want to come in and they take the project for you and go their way. So you need to realize, okay, what are the things I can actually do? Who can I bring in to do other things for me? Now, it's a different thing when the uh, money, the fund is not enough to actually hire people. people. That's when you cannot take free courses, watch YouTube videos to see how you can do some things on your own till you're able to actually hire people to do some things for you. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you, thank you. Thank My you, pleasure. Shika. Um, you do this for a living, helping people just figure these things out so that they don't burn out because yeah. that's what we see. We see lots of women have their hands in different pies mm -hmm. and before you know it, they've you know, aged before their time mm -hmm. and they are looking harassed all the time and it's just not a nice place to yeah. be. But, you know, they will still tell you, I need to do this thing. I need to augment my salary. And it's for the greater good. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know how to go about it, you end up burning out and you won't achieve what you want to achieve. Thank you so very much, Chica, for coming through. And for everyone who tuned in to today's episode of the Wife's Roundtable show, don't forget that Wife's Roundtable is an online community as well. So I urge you to join us online. We are at Wife's Roundtable on both Instagram as well as on Facebook. My name is Amaka Chibuzaobi and you can also find me on social media. Just put in Amaka Chibuzaobi everywhere and you will see me. And until I come your way next week, don't forget, love everyone around you. But most importantly, love yourself because you can't give what you don't have. Have a very good day, my friends. Bye-bye.